options are based upon what you've described to me. I think your best option is having projects on development services, uh, specifically a Redmine project or projects. Okay. And then um, you assign tasks there, and um, then those tasks move through the different states, um, and they can be assigned to different people as needed, and then when they're completed, they're marked as completed. Um, but I'll, I'll start out first, I guess, with a real quick review of what um, on VLCS, what we mean by mm -hmm. workflow there. And typically, where we're using it most is with regard to the forms. Um, so with forms that are being created. So for example, um, you know, if you go into any time someone requests a new project, like if you decide you want to use VLDS, you um, would go to this particular form. Are you you're seeing my screen now? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. OK. So you'd go to this particular form that we've built using the dynamic data list. And you, know, you fill in these specific requests. And when you click on Send, that actually, we've tied this to the workflow. And so what ends up happening is that we get notifications because we've got groups associated with the assignment. So in mm -hmm. other words, workflow is enabled, so I can show you that. So if I go under Admin, and I go to Content, and then within here, OK, so we've got dynamic data lists. And so within each oh. dynamic list, we have, so for example, um, let me go to the development project request form. So within here, I can go in here and click on Edit. And you can see that there's a workflow specified. Okay, So we have a specific workflow for this particular form. Okay. And so when a request comes in, it goes through that workflow. So um, you know, what we then have to do is, um, you know, as so to understand what it's doing, let me switch gears and go, I believe that I have to go to the control panel for this to look at the defined workflow itself, because that's set up um, system-wide. So oh, look at all these nice options. Yeah, so workflow. <laughs> and so um, project repository, or I'm sorry, project. And this is kind of ugly at the moment, so we're looking to improve upon it. Um, let me see. So, okay, project. Let me switch the number of items per page. Then I can see it hopefully more quickly. This is version three. So, new project request. I think it was V3. Is that what you saw, Mike, or was it V2? I think it was a V3, if I remember. I, the, I see V3 oh, hi, there. <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, I see new community request, V3. Why did I not see that? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just show you. Let's do the new community it just as a point. Um, add. Uh, and John, just for your information, since you asked about this the other day, mm -hmm. um, these are actually dynamic data lists, what uh, these uh, forms are t attached to. Uh, that's, what I was, forms. that's what I was going to ask you about, yeah. too, on a separate thing, yeah. is, OK, once I create a form, how do I put it on a page so people can use it, I guess? Yeah, that was, was OK. going to be my next question on that. But that's OK. That's for another. <laughs> Well, we discussion. might be able to show you since we have this up and running. Oh, OK. OK. I just want to see the best way of doing that. So OK. So what this oh, does is it has a nice little graphical editor that allows us basically to define the different steps. Hmm. Um, let me see if that would be, get this a little bit cleaner here. OK. So, so a new request comes in. And basically, we process the request. Then it goes to this particular state of contact the requester. Um, within each of these, um, and Mike can correct me if I'm wrong. He's more familiar with this. But 
basically an, an email can be generated for each of these different stages or a notification mm. um, within VLCS itself. But basically there are different states. And so um, it has to go through these different states and then there are groups associated with each. So we, you know, the first state is contact the requester. So we're going to process that request. We, you know, say, okay, contact the requester. And then at that point, um, you're either going to create the community or, so this is a community request rather than a project request, so don't be confused by that. Right, so it's that. either, at this point, there's a decision that's made, right? We're either going to create it or we're going to deny it. Um, in each of these cases, there's an email that's generated that lets people know it's going to a specific group of people. And then basically at the end state, you close the request, um, either because it was denied or because it was created. Um, now, when it says now, contact requester in this case, I was just trying to go through the logic here because it says who actually made the new community request in this case? The request. This is anyone that's submitting a request. Request, like from, the, from the, yeah, the VLAB page. Right, the from the form there. itself. So if we look at, let me go back here. So VLAB, that is. And I go to, so this is tied, so just so we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, if you come over here and under communities, there's this new community request form. Right. And so someone right. has filled this form out. And it's whoever's logged in and filled out this form is the one that initiated the request. Okay. Right, gotcha. Okay. And so it goes through that, and then they then, then it gets routed to the administrators, us. Okay. Oh, so this the VLST because that's what's defined within this particular um, workflow. So, um, so anyway, that's I'm trying to see. Yeah, it says contact the, requester, and I'm thinking contact requester or is it contacting the the administrator or the, whoever does now. The so, uh, so I guess um, that's I'm trying the, to remember. That's the name of the task. So when right. we created the workflow. We named this task. Um, whoever gets notified of this, that's the task they need to do. They need to contact the requester. Oh, it's more. Let, oh, let them, yeah, okay. Let them know that we received it and we're looking at it, and then and and then we make a decision at this point if we're going to create or deny. So several things happen yeah. happen at that point there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's not completely. Com I mean, it, it's sort of complete, but it's not really complete. It tells you, that, you know, everything that's happening there. Yeah, um, so it, if you look at the source, then that's actually what actually shows the emails that are being generated oh, itself. Geez. Okay. <laughs> so it's basically, you can see, um, so yeah. anyway. Yeah, your screen, screen's kind of, it looks like you have two screens. I do. I oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a little hard to read uh, the screen. Let me, you at. should, if, what sort of system are you on? Uh, just a Windows 7. Okay, so you can zoom in. Yeah. If oh, this is yes. This is how we solve everything with VLab. Yeah, I, I'm giving it. you a hard time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, I zoomed in. Yeah, so I couldn't can, help it. You yeah. you said it. Yeah, I know. I it was opened up. So, <laughs> so anyway, the um, so it does come in here, and you can then get uh, you can look at all the details. Right. right, right Normally, gotcha. what we do is we set this up for you. You don't have to go through this process, right? But, but basically, that's the workflow. You define oh, okay. the states. You define the tasks that happen. Mm -hmm. Who's involved? You know, who is pending list? And then, just so you understand where all this is going, when I get a notification, mm -hmm. or the person that's assigned to, so when a task gets assigned, workflow task gets assigned to a group, it's always assigned to a particular group. Then um, they'll all get notified. And so you'd get an email. And then you come in here, or you might get notified via this notification up here. And then you come into My Account, and under My Account, um, you've got My Workflow Tasks. Right, okay. I've seen those, yeah. And so within there, it's going to list out any outstanding issues. And so, okay. um, so when it comes into that, that where you're you're saying where it says contact requester, actually, there's several tasks that are in there. Though, I mean, it's 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 
it's going to the requester saying, yes, we've re received it. And also at the same time, it's sending a a task to whoever's responsible for right, and then they have to assign approving or denying. To, yeah, then they assign that task to themselves, and then they basically perform some action. They're either approving it or yeah. So so it's whatever sort of logic, and that's very customizable. That can all be established. But typically, the workflow within VLCS is tied to some sort of form, the mm -hmm. dynamic data list, okay. or that's the most common thing. It can be configured so that it's actually, if you go in, let me go back in, so to the, let me go back, um, at the community level, you can actually enable workflow for other things too. So let's take a look at that really quick. So actually, mm. I think it's under configuration. So examples of this are, let's say, for example, you have people c publishing content, web content within your uh, within your yes. system, right? That is that is a that's a real thing for us. Okay. So, yeah, I was going to describe something in a minute about publications, actually. Okay. So why am I? Okay. So why am I not seeing it, Mike? I'm drawing a blank. So configuration. Workflow. Is it under it's under configuration. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So there's the workflow. Workflow. There you are. So, so some things are configured. You enable workflow. All right. So you can say system wide on. I'm sorry. Community wide. You can say okay. Page revisions. Any sort of changes to pages can can go through an approval process if you need right. to. Right, and you can Logs. assign workflow to that. You can define right exactly. So you can use yeah. like a single okay. approver, sure. right? So you have a you maybe your community administrators are the ones that need to approve any sort of changes. So you can tie that in, and even like for form messages, I don't think you'd want to do that. But anyway, <laughs> you can see that it's, it's unless you're having a problem terrible. with somebody, <laughs> right? So, but it's not per user. It, it's it's right. community wide, so you'd have to do that. Right. Um, so that's. That's you know at the wiki level at the web content it can be done also um, you can see down here that certain things aren't global they're actually tied to like the dynamic data list so per form you can specify on documents you can specify at a hmm. folder level okay in this particular folder I want to use workflow but in another folder you don't need to. So you can basically have an approval step in certain cases and not in others. So it's very um, f flexible in that respect. Um, there's also something um, that Mike has just put in place with regard to the wikis. So if you wanted, because you know you can actually have multiple wiki nodes, so in other words, different high-level wikis within your community. Yeah. And so he's got something in there that so, for example, within AWIPS, they're using this where they've got the SSDD, um, the systems, uh, what, I'm forgetting what it stands for, but it's basically um, instructions to like develop AWIPS developers on how to make changes to the system and things like that and develop code for AWIPS. So Raytheon has put all that into a wiki within the AWIPS community, and they wanted to be able to control who made updates to that wiki. They didn't want anyone within the AWS community to just make changes to it. Oh, it gotcha. They wanted a subgroup. So they wanted to have an approval step. And so he's made changes to be able to support that. So anyway, that's that's workflow within VLCS, but it's very much tied to entities within VLCS. Well, I'll, I'll, matter of fact, when you said about a document folder, mm -hmm. um, this was another, this is why I think there's, we, I may have a mix here, actually. Okay. Um, we, we're just putting together a, or looking at changing the means by which we approve, uh, um, if, well, review and approve uh, articles for journals mm -hmm. and also uh, for ranking um, uh, abstracts for conferences okay. and, and reviewing them. And if, 
if someone loaded something into a, a particular folder, um, we would probably want the people that were going to do the review to get something saying you need to review it, and sure. and uh, you know either say yes, no, or not sure, or something. <laughs> you know, come up okay. with something, some way of uh, of saying whether uh, you know they agreed with it or not to uh, okay. let it go forward. So yeah, so that's definitely possible. Okay. So um, so basically, what um, you can then do is. I'm within the document library on a, one of our test communities, right. and so you got this. Someone created a central region two graphics, so you that, edit that's me. It. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So you edit that page, and what you can see is there. Um, right here, you see define specific document type restrictions and workflows oh, for this folder. Okay. So you click that. What you would need us as administrators to do is we would need to work with you and you'd need to tell us, okay, the, these are the groups that are responsible for um, approving or rejecting the incoming requests. Gotcha. And then we would develop a specific workflow definition for you oh, and then okay. you would be able to select that from the list and then define that and save it, and then you would be set. So that only when someone tried to upload documents to that particular folder or folders, subfolders under that folder, they would um, then, it wouldn't go directly, make be published immediately. It would go through this review step, and then once you guys approved it, then it would show up on the site. And we and what's nice is it sounds like you, is you can, and I've noticed it too when I deal with things is um, you could always let whoever uploaded it know that it has been received and is oh, being yeah, reviewed. Oh, yeah, yeah, you so. can do that, too. So. Does, it, does it have anything in it that it says, okay, after so many days, if you haven't done it? <laughs> I mean, that's the question, wow. too, is, you know, somebody could say, ah, oh, you know, I'm not going to. I'll look at it in two weeks after I'm back from the Bahamas or something. But uh, I think that it's. Um, I believe that there is the ability to have a timer. Um, do you? Recall? Yeah, there is. I've never used. I've never used it, yet, it either. But, but I, know, I that, know that it's a possibility. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. That that I am certain that would be something we would need to do because sometimes somebody's out of pocket and. Okay. And if they're well, not we, around, you know, we just need them to time out, and we just sure. have to go with what we have. Yeah, so what you would um, want to do there is um, when you guys have a specific example of something that needs to be created and you want to put that in place, or before you want it put in place, let us know, and then we you can help um, define exactly what that workflow should be. Okay. And right. then we would create that for you, and then you can go off and then start using it. So, so right. that, that's that. So the other side of the house on the development services side is um, so I guess this is an example of a project that I I've put together where I used it for migrating VLab over to NCEP to the IDP framework. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so within here, um, so what I've done is let me switch this to last year. So if I come in here and I'll look at all any issue, apply that, and so what I did is. I put together basically a project plan, right? So in this case, I you know specified okay they've got to open up ports, they have to define, develop the VMs. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, so within each, you can create tasks, and then those tasks can be dependent upon one another. Oh, okay. And yeah, so uh... what you can then do is so for example. You know, this task here, verify that migrated VLAB software. So if I look at this particular task, you can see from the Gantt chart that there is a dependency there. Gotcha. And, and you, just, so, you just gave it a name of support, or you just used a default, whatever's in the system. So, so there are different um, tracker types, um, and you have options to choose as a project administrator or owner which trackers make sense for your project. Okay, so there are some basic ones, there are some more complicated ones, there are some in the system that are specific to AWIPS that probably wouldn't apply. But you can, 
basically what you need to understand is I think that this is going to meet your needs, not for the document thing, but for helping to manage tasks for different people and especially routing things. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is that you create these tasks, and it may be a one-off, it may be one s simple thing, and there may be no dependencies upon it, um, or it might be something more complicated like this case here. Right. But you go in, you create a new issue, you go from that, you choose what type is this, mm -hmm. um, and then yep. you know, is it a bug, a feature, support? Um, yeah, matter of fact, I have. Yeah, I, matter of fact, I, I've been using it a little bit just as I was. I've been making changes to the Central Region uh, mm -hmm. Sioux community just so I can track a few things and, and get sure. used to it. Yeah, you know, that's what sure. So you give a subject, you give your description, okay. and then basically each of these trackers have a different set of statuses, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you're first creating it, it's new. But then if I were just starting on it, I might put it in progress, okay? Right. So then the other key is that you assign it to an individual. So maybe you're doing it for yourself, so you can assign it to yourself. You, would, you can put a due date in there. If right. you put the start date and due date, that's going to be reflected in the Gantt chart. You can put in an estimated time that it takes to complete that work. Um, that's useful in just doing, you know, you can use that as a means of for reporting. Um, you can also, then what happens is that an email gets generated to whoever is assigned the task. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if you're creating it and you give it to someone else, they would then be um, given that, they'd get an email notification, it would be in their pending list, so that when they logged into development services um, on their page, um, they're going to see these tasks, okay? Right. Um, and then what do they do? So once they've done something, so if we go back to the issues, and if I switch it to, I'm going to go to my um, view all issues. Um, actually, all right, so these are open issues I have within this particular project. Okay. So I can go up into this issue. I can say, OK, I need to start on this. So I need to go in here, edit it. I'm going to say it's in progress. I'm going to provide some sort of update in terms of what's happened with it. And then once it gets to a point where, yeah, for me, what I would do then is I would go in and I would basically, I might resolve, mark it as resolved, or maybe it's someone else's responsibility at that point, and they just need to take over ownership. So I would leave it in progress and then assign it to whoever else is on the team. So maybe John Chattel then should take this ticket. And then you're going to see a history within the ticket itself. So you can see here what's taken place. This is really important because all of that institutional knowledge that takes place in solving different problems and tasks and things is recorded within the issue. Right. You also, if you use it, when you do this update, you can specify how much time you spent on it. And then that can be important because then when it's done, you can see, okay, well, how much time did it actually take me to complete this work as opposed to my estimate? And then that'll help you because in terms of, you know, for um, estimate time tracking and also your estimates, so you get better and better at putting in those forecasts um, of, you know, how much time it takes to do different things. Um, so. So that's critical. And then, to anyone that joins your project, it's all searchable. So they can come in and they can say, OK, well, I need to do something just like this. And so you do a quick search. And um, you, know, you can go in there. And so if I do LDAP and search within here, you can see, OK, the first thing that came up was add LDAP West there. Um, so I can then go into that issue and say, Oh, well, that's exactly what I need to do. So um, does that help? Yes, and the question I had is, um, so how would you make a, a dependency, though? 
Okay. Someone can't right. work on their next part until the previous person gets uh, okay. their task so, completed. So if um, they're distinct tasks but related, mm -hmm. then you would create a second issue, and then you would basically show a dependency. So if I come in here, um, what you can do is if there's something else that needs to happen that's independent but it requires the completion of this, mm -hmm. you can come in here to related issues and you can say add and then it can either be related to it, it can block this other issue, it can this one precedes the issue that we're going to specify here or the issue the current one follows this next one. Oh. So you can specify at this level what's there. And then if you do that, let's say it pre this um, it follows another issue, or let's say, like in your case, you're saying this one precedes another issue. Well, you're right. Yeah, and that so be. in that case, you'd say precedes. And then what it's going to do is you can specify how many days before the next one can be started. And then it's going to use your due date um, as the start date plus whatever days you put in here for the start date of the other tasks. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so you can do that. The other option is that you can go in and you can specify, um, you can create subtasks. So let's say that you've got a task and then you determine that, okay, well, it really requires a bunch of different subtasks. So you can go in and add subtasks to this and then it's going to show that parent, and then the subtask will, will drive the start and due date for the parent task. So in other oh, words, the that's, parent that's why it has a parent task. That's why right. A, so the parent becomes a container, and basically not until all the children, child tasks are complete, will the um, parent be closed out. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Or, or be complete. So. Right. Well, um, the, the right. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was, no, that's it. I was gonna, but you, before you, there, you should have both issues in before you tie them together, though. Yeah, you have to create the second issue. Right, because so, then you have yeah. to add it, and uh, and you can and you can go either way. So yeah, I mean, you can. What I mean by that is you could, you know. Once you associate one to the other, it's that association you're going to see it in both issues. Right. But you only have to do it from one of the two. So. Right, but they both need to be in there first before you can. That's correct. Dependencies. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 fine. That that tells yeah. me what I need to know on that. Yeah. Okay, boy, this has been this has been great. I just didn't realize there. It makes sense now. There was two different, you know, types of work. Well, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Workflows per per se, I guess you could say it, or ways of doing things here. Yeah, and then project, the advantage then is you. management. Right. The advantage then is you can come in then and go to my page, and then you're going to see all the different issues that are assigned to you or groups that you are included within. So you can see issues assigned to me. You can see I've got a lot of issues, <laughs> 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 and I've reported even more. But um, so so those are things that yeah you, know, you can then start working through, and then you can use the priorities and things like that to. Um, to basically sort that information to figure out, okay, what really do I need to work on? So, yeah. okay, okay, no, that that was that was really helpful. That tells okay, me a lot. Okay, very good. Because I've been playing with, the, I just haven't uh, been doing much on the uh, collaboration services side. Sure. As much, but this this red mine, this kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean this this is really really helpful, and it's being used in lots of projects. Oh yeah, so, I mean yeah, it's I've heard um, that. I've we heard that. yeah there are over a hundred now, and so a ton for AWIPS and and many and you know goes are. It's also being used um, in the field um, at WFOs, so you can see that we've got um, you know Eastern Region LWX and and so OUN. Oh, okay. And, so NGSP, they're actually using it um, as issue tracking at the site to keep track of, okay, well, what sort of things need to take place, what needs to be done, and and so oh, anyway. Good. good, yeah, good. All right, well, I've got another meeting sure, uh, sure, at I the agree. top of the hour.
But um, let us know when you're, if you have specific questions, if you need a project created, uh, you can you know, submit a request if, if you don't already have a project where you want to use the issue tracking. Um, and then when it comes to workflows for the documents, when right. you're getting ready to, or getting, you know, when you know what you need, let us know and we can help okay. with defining that workflow. Well, that sounds great. No, it's just a, all of it is is making sure I get myself get the design right in the first place. So yeah, what I want yeah. To do. And, the, and they can be updated. You saw that we had version one, two, and three. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah, we you know we'll work on the dev system to make sure that um, it's working as as designed. And then um, once we got that, then we would publish it to the production side. Okay. And but then if something changes and you need, yeah, you know, uh, to include another group or or something like that, we okay. can create second versions. So. Okay, well, that's that sounds good. Okay, great. All right, um, and then I think Laura is going to be getting with you with regard to this forum. Um, you've got yeah, I I, I come up. I so killed. I killed it. I mean, it looks like okay. I was able to kill it, and it's like, so, oh gosh, I, I, it looked like it was in a loop, and I said, okay, how did yeah, I so loop what, this? What's happening here? Because this, this bit us. Um, oh, uh, when we first started setting things up, and I was finally able to figure it out. Um, so what ends up happening is because you've got a, a Gmail account, right? That's that's tied to the particular forum. Right. right. So what you need to do is well, it's tied to yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's actually tied, tied to a forum, to yeah, a forum right. right? Right. I'm right. collecting all the yeah, news, as it were, or all the emails. yeah. So so what ends up happening is you need to basically um, delete any record or filter any any email coming into that from itself. Um, and so we're gonna you'll be sent an um, email from Laura with instructions on what because because you're the owner of the um, of the email account, right? Right, I am. Yeah. Okay, so um, so basically, you just need to put some filtering in place, and then that'll solve it. Okay. So. Yeah. She sent me some notes, but I was going to wait to see if she had anything else. I yeah. Now she'll give you explicit instructions on okay. what what needs to be done. So. Right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thanks, John. Yeah. Take All right, care, thanks, Mike. Well, you bet. Thanks. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.